Hello. This is a lecture for section 3.1, power functions and polynomial functions. All right, so we begin with a couple of definitions. What is a power function to start with? Well, a power function is any function that can take, that takes the form f of x equals x raised to the p power, where x is some variable and p is some number. So an example of a power function from the toolkit functions is uh, the quadratic functions, f, quadratic function, f of x equals x squared. Another example of a power function is the cubic function, f of x equals x to the third power. These are both power functions because the base in this exponential expression is a variable and the exponent is a number or a value. All right. A second definition <clears throat> that we're going to establish is long-run behavior of a function. The long-run behavior of a function is what happens as the function approaches positive and negative infinity. Okay. So, for example, if we take a look at the quadratic function, if we graph that function, the graph of the quadratic function roughly it looks like this, right? Okay. The long run behavior is what happens to this graph as it goes off, um, <clears throat> as it goes off toward uh, negative infinity with the x's and positive infinity, right? So if we were to describe this long run behavior of the quadratic function we would say that f of x approaches positive infinity as x approaches negative infinity. This statement here describes the left portion of the graph, right? f of x is approaching positive infinity as x is approaching negative infinity, right? We can reverse the order on that as well. To describe the right end of the graph, if you will, we would say that f of x approaches positive infinity again as x approaches positive infinity. These two statements here, these two um, <clears throat> mathematical statements describe the long run behavior or end behavior of the quadratic function, right? If we were to look at the um, cubic function, f of x equals x to the third power, a very rough sketch of the cubic function is going to look something like this, right? And as you can see, the ends of the graph are doing something different than the ends of this graph did, right? Here, describing the long run behavior of the cubic function, we would say that f of x approaches negative infinity as x approaches negative infinity, right? Describing this leftmost portion of the graph here. The right end of it, we would say that f of x approaches infinity, positive infinity, as x, oops, it's an s, as x approaches positive infinity. Okay, these two statements describe the long run or end behavior of the cubic function, right? f of x approaches negative infinity as x approaches negative infinity, and f of x approaches positive infinity as x approaches positive infinity. All right, let's take a look at a couple of graphs that I have transposed on top of each other. Okay, um, let me sketch over these. And they're in an actual PowerPoint. They're nice because I've got them different colors. Can't really do that on the paper, so my printer here is not a color printer. So let me just mark over them. This pink, this pink graph here, this is the graph of the quadratic 
function from toolkit's function, toolkit functions, right? That's the graph of uh, x squared or y equal x squared or f of x equal x squared, okay? This next graph in here, or this orange one, oops, this orange graph, this is the graph of x to the fourth power. Okay, let's put one more on there. This next one, oh, and this does keep on going, by the way, those would be arrows there. Okay, this next one in this blue one that I'm drawing over here, this one is the graph of x to the sixth power. Okay, and there's one more on there, that last inside of this last graph here, this one is the graph of x to the eighth power. All right. So what do you notice is happening here? These are all power functions. They're all even power functions. Note that the end behavior or long run behavior of all four of these functions is the same. It's the same. They all go as x approaches um, negative infinity, f of x approaches positive infinity. Or as f of x approaches positive infinity, x approaches negative infinity. Same here. As f of x approaches positive infinity, x approaches positive infinity. So all even power functions will have the same behavior. They will all resemble, they will all resemble the quadratic function. Okay. Notice something else that's interesting that happens right here at the horizontal axis. This is the horizontal axis here. Pen is running out, I think. This is the x-axis along the bottom here. Look what happens here. It's hard to see now I've written over them, but with the uh, x squared graph, it's very rounded and smooth. It's a very nice vertex of a parabola, right? When we look at x to the fourth, the graph of x to the fourth, the orange one, look what happens. There's a little bit of squaring that occurs near that vertex. Or as this graph approaches the horizontal axis, it lingers a little bit before it leaves it again. For the graph of x to the sixth, it lingers longer. Like there's more squaring that occurs. x to the eighth, even more squaring. Even more squaring. If I were to put x to the 100th on here, there would probably be a very square corner that would ha happen right here. I need a new pen. It would be very, very square. It would linger a very long time near the x-axis or where that intercept occurs. Okay, this behavior is consistent with power functions. Consistent with power functions. Now let's compare these even power functions to the graph of odd power functions. Right? Um, <clears throat> the lowest, or the lowest power, I guess, the lowest exponent, smallest exponent we can have on a power function would be 1, right? So this is the graph of the identity function, right? y equal x. It's really x to the first, but we don't write that first power very often, do we? The next odd exponent we could have would be um, x to the third, okay, so this orange graph, this orange graph is the graph of x to the third power. Alright, x to the fifth power is going to be this, uh, I don't know, lighter blue graph that I'm drawing. Uh, get in the right place there. Right, then x to the seventh 
would be the darker blue. Right. So look what happens here. It's a similar thing. When the power functions have an odd exponent on them, I to write it as x to the seventh. When there's an odd exponent on the power function, um, all the end behavior is always going to be the same. Right? For these odd power functions, as x approaches negative infinity, y approaches negative infinity. Or as x approaches negative infinity, f of x approaches negative infinity. As x approaches positive infinity, f of x approaches positive infinity. Same long run behavior or end behavior. Also, look what happens here at the horizontal intercept. Right Here's our x-axis. There's our x-axis right there. Look what happens at the horizontal intercept where this graph crosses over the horizontal axis. For the identity function, or x to the first power, the line goes right straight through. No lingering or squaring. For the cubic function, look at the orange graph there, there's a little bit of lingering, right? a little bit of squaring near the horizontal intercept. It holds, it, it lingers near that horizontal intercept. For x to the fifth, it lingers longer, a little bit more squaring. x to the seventh, even more. If I were to put x to the hundredth on here, it would probably be very, very squared. It would want to linger there a very, very, very long time. All right. So for odd power functions, the end behavior will be the same. The behavior near the intercept, the horizontal intercept, will become, uh, there will be more squaring to it or more lingering as the exponent increases. All right. So let's look at some examples here and see if we can describe the long run behavior of these functions. Okay, let's start with this first one, a. Uh, f of x equals negative x to the fifth. All right? Well, that's an odd exponent, right? That's an odd exponent. So I would expect it to look like the cubic function, right? But, but look at this. It's being reflected it's being reflected across the horizontal axis, right? So what's actually happening here, what's actually happening here, because of that negative, we're reflecting it across the horizontal axis, so it's going to then end up looking like that, the end behavior anyway. It's to the fifth power, so we would definitely have some squaring here in the middle. So how will I describe this end behavior? I would say as x approaches negative infinity, f of x approaches positive infinity. Or I could say f of x approaches positive infinity as x approaches negative infinity. The matter the order I see these in. Then as x approaches positive infinity, f of x approaches negative infinity. And they go opposite directions when they're odd powered functions. Look at the next one, g of x, x to the 12th power. What's that graph going to look like? Well, it's going to resemble the quadratic function, right, because it's an even exponent, except there'll be more squaring about it, right? There'll be more squaring, so it's probably and there's no reflection, so this one is probably <laughs> going to look something like that. Right? Describe that end behavior. As x approaches negative infinity, oops, as x approaches negative infinity, what does f of g of x do? g of x approaches positive infinity. And as x approaches positive infinity, what is g of x doing? It's also approaching positive infinity. It goes both ways when on even functions. The end behavior always goes off in both direction, in the same direction. Okay, compare that down here with h of x. With h of x, x to the 24th power, it's even again, so you'd think it would look like that, but, but it's being reflected 
It's being reflected. So this one is actually, it's going to resemble the a squared function, the x squared function, but 24 is much larger, so there's going to be some squaring. And it's probably going to look something like that. It's reflected across the x, the x axis. There's a vertical reflection going on. So for this one, we would say that as x approaches to the left, negative infinity, f of x also approaches negative infinity. And then as we go right, or as x approaches positive infinity, f of x <coughs> still approaches negative infinity. Okay? In behavior or long run behavior of polynomial functions. Okay, all even power functions. Uh, the end behavior goes off in the same direction. With all odd-powered functions, the end behavior goes off in opposite directions. All right, let's add some definitions here. <clears throat> a polynomial is really just a sum or difference of power functions. It's really all it is. Um, so it, 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 a polynomial is anything that we can write in this form here. Look, we're adding power functions. Um, <clears throat> x squared, x to the first. Sometimes there's a constant, which is really just x to the zero, right? You can have any number of them up to x to the n. All right, let's write an example. It would be an example of a polynomial. Um, well, it might be this. Let's see. Uh, 7 plus... 4x minus 2x cubed plus x to the fifth. All right, I just wrote, made up a polynomial here. It's actually an increasing order of the exponent. Uh, the standard form, we typically don't write them this way. We typically write them by decreasing order of the exponent. Doesn't matter, it's the same polynomial, however we arrange it. Okay, so there's an example of a polynomial. The coefficient is the constant in front of the variable, or what the constant that we're multiplying the power function by. Right, so for this one that I just drew, the coefficients, the coefficients are 7, because that could be x to the 0, there's nothing there, 4 times x, negative 2, right, times x cubed. Uh, what's the coefficient of x to the fifth? Well, we don't usually write it, but it would be 1. Okay? A term is any one piece of this sum, or we could think about it as any one of the power functions that's being added, right? So this one here has four terms. 7, um, it's got a 4x, it's got a negative 2x cubed, and a 1x to the fifth. All right? The degree of the polynomial is the, large, is the highest power or the largest exponent that's there. Right? It's the highest power on the variable or the highest, largest exponent. So the, the degree of this polynomial I drew here is going to be 5 because it's the largest. Right? So on that example, the degree is going to be 5. Right, the leading term is the term that has the highest degree. Okay, so for this example that I drew, it's going to be this x to the fifth, 1x to the fifth, but it would be silly to put a multiple of 1 in front of there, right? It's the leading term. And then the leading coefficient is simply the coefficient of the leading term. And this example that I drew here, it's going to be 1. Some terminology or definitions. Now let's look at an example. Let's see if we can identify all the parts of this polynomial. Let's see. We want to find the degree, the leading term, and the leading coefficient. Let's see. Maybe I'll just make columns here. We'll write the degree here. Put the leading term in this column, and then the leading coefficient last. Appreciate it. 
So what is the degree of this first polynomial written here? Well, remember, the degree is the highest power, right? So it's going to be 3, right? That's a degree 3 polynomial. The leading term is the entire term that has that 3 in it. So it's going to be positive 7x cubed, or 7x cubed. Okay. Then the leading coefficient is the coefficient on that leading term. In this example, it's 7. Okay. Look at the next one. What's the degree? It's the highest power, so it would be 5. Leading term. Term with the highest power, r to the fifth. Leading coefficient, it's the coefficient on the leading term. No number is there, so it has to be 1. 1 times r to the fifth. All right. Now, let's see if we can look at this polynomial here and describe the long run behavior. Okay? One thing that we can always be sure with polynomials is that the long run behavior will be the same as that of the leading term. The long run behavior will be the same as that of the leading term. All right, so what is the leading term of this polynomial? It's t to the fourth. Since 4 is an even exponent, that means I don't know exactly what this whole graph would look like offhand, but I do know what the long run behavior would look like. The leading term is not negative, so there's no reflection. So the long run behavior is going to be similar to the long run behavior of the quadratic function. Now, I don't know what's going on in between here. But it doesn't matter when I'm thinking about long run behavior. All I care is about the ends. All I care about is the ends. So to describe the long run behavior of this polynomial, I would say as x approaches negative infinity, my behavior f of oh we're not using x we're doing t. Sorry about this. So we want to say as t approaches negative infinity, f of t approaches positive infinity. See, it's going up. And as t approaches positive infinity, f of t approaches positive infinity again because it's going up. Right? So the long run of polynomial, the long run behavior of polynomials resembles that or will be the same as that of the leading term or is indicated by the leading term, okay? A couple of notes here about intercepts and turning points of polynomial. A polynomial cannot have any more intercepts than the degree of the polynomial, right? So in other words, if the polynomial's degree is n, it will have at most n horizontal intercepts. So, um, Think about the identity function. If I were just to scratch a, or sketch real quickly, scratch a, sketch a linear function here. It, uh, it might be something like this. Y equals, I don't know, 2x um, plus 4 there. There's a, uh, a linear function, right? The degree, the degree on this polynomial is 1, so it can only have 1 horizontal intercept. It cannot have more than one. Um, if the degree is two, say it was quadratic, a quadratic can have, let's do a different sketch. A quadratic, if it's just a toolkit function, x squared is going to sit right on the origin and have only one horizontal intercept. But if we were to shift that down, right, with a transformation, it would then have two horizontal intercepts, right? So that's why we say at most n, at most n horizontal intercepts. <clears throat> it might have less. This, of course, is um, uh, this one would probably, I don't know. This is the x squared. This one is something else. Let's say it's x squared minus 4. Okay. 
So it, 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 it cannot have more than two horizontal intercepts. It might have less, right, if we had parabola sitting on there. It might have none at all with the parabola, right? Like if we shift it up, there are no horizontal intercepts. So it's at most, the most number of horizontal intercepts is the degree on the polynomial. Okay, the next point here is that we have at least one horizontal intercept if the degree is odd. Why would that be the case? Well, we know that polynomial end behavior always resembles the leading term, and we know that odd, odd um, power functions have end behavior that goes off in opposite directions like the linear function or the cubic function. Well, if the end behavior is going off in opposite directions like this, the only way to get from a negative infinity to the positive infinity is to cross over that horizontal axis, right? So that's why uh, all odd polynomials have at least one horizontal intercept. This even polynomial, the even polynomial that I sketched right here, this guy, he's probably something like this, maybe x squared plus 4, right? None. It has none, but that's okay because the end behavior is going both directions. Another one that may have none, no horizontal intercepts would be like a reflected um, quadratic. This one might be, I don't know, negative x squared minus 4, something like that. Okay, the last point here is there is at most n minus 1 turning points. At most n minus 1 turning points. So at least one intercept if it's odd. At most n minus 1 turning points. Think about that. The linear function, what is n minus 1? The degree minus 1 is 0, 0 turning points. <laughs> look at our quadratic. The degree is 2, 2 minus 1 is 1, and look, there is actually one turning point for every quadratic function. It's going to be the vertex of the parabola. Okay? Cubic functions, oh, well, and they're, not, they're bad examples. Um, yeah, we're not going to go any further with that. All right, some characteristics. Now, let's, given those things we just discussed, um, look at these two examples here, and let's see if we can identify the possible degree of the functions. We can't be sure yet. We haven't learned enough to be sure yet. Um, but let's see if we can identify the possible degree of these functions. Well, that's why it's kind of hard to see. Okay. What might the possible degree be? Well, look at this. The end behavior is opposite directions, so we know that it's odd. We know that it's odd, don't we? Um, look at the horizontal intercepts. Wow, there's a lot of them. How many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's seven horizontal intercepts. How many turning points are there? Well, a turning point is going to be a, a, a local max or a local min. There's one there. There's one there. There's one there. One, two, three, four, five, there are six turning points. Okay, well, what are the characteristics then? What are the characteristics? The end behavior tells us it's odd. Okay, and then what does this say here about the intercepts and the turning points? Okay, there's at most n horizontal intercepts. At most. So how many intercepts do we have? Seven. So the highest degree this one can be is seven. Is that right? No. This this could have more than seven, couldn't it? It says at most and horizontal. This could be nine or eleven. It could be greater than that. There's at least one if it's odd. Well, we got more than one. And then there's at most n minus 1 turning points. Ooh, n minus 1 turning points. Well, let's see. There's six turning points here. n minus 1 makes that, uh, if n is 7, 7 minus 1 is 6. I think a good guess here would be that the degree of this polynomial function listed here is going to be 7. Could be higher, but n is a seven is going to be the smallest possible one. 
Now look at this other graph over here. Look at the end behavior. It's going in the same direction. What does that say? That tells us that the degree is even, or it's an even function. All right. And look at the intercepts. There's only two. So there's two horizontal intercepts. What about the turning points? Well, this is kind of interesting. Look, one, two, there's three turning points. So what can that tell us then about the possible degree of this polynomial? Well, we know that it's even, okay? There's two intercepts, three turning points. Look at our rules here. There's at most n minus one turning points. There's three turning points. This might be degree four, right? Might be degree four. That's even. Two horizontal intercepts. Well, it says it says um, at most n horizontal intercepts. So the, so the most it could be if it, if the degree was four, it could have four horizontal um, intercepts, but it doesn't. It has two. It can have less. That's fine. All right, so I, my guess here on this one would be that it's degree four. It could be higher than four, but four is the lowest that it can have. All right, that ends the lecture for section 3.1.